many times in our continuous study prayer relationship we become so familiar with the things of god that we start to miss the core convictions of walking the life of faith that he has designed for all of us to live and in there we start to become unserious we become complacent we settle for only that which is convenient and applicable in our own understanding and then we claim to believe in a god and carry a faith that we are not willing able or bold enough to act it out you find a sick man you can't lay hands on them but you believe that jesus what heals you're sick but you cannot believe god for healing but you believe that jesus heals i believe that in the days that we're entering god needs more tenacity commitment and resilience in our spirits more than he has ever required of the church before colossians chapter 3 verses 1. he says if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with christ act like it pursue the things over which christ presides in second kings chapter 3 the bible tells us that the israelites had power over a very famous king called mesha of moab so when ahab dies the son Joram takes over and then this Moabite king rebels against the king of Israel. So the king, the Bible says in the sixth verse, he went to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and told him that the king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to attack Moab? So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and then they also called unto the king of Edom. And they also asked him and said, join us also. But as they go, Jehoshaphat, being a very spiritual man, he tells them, let us inquire of the Lord through the prophet Elisha. Elisha allows to hear God for these three kings on behalf of Jehoshaphat. So in prayer, God confirms to Jehoshaphat, the king of Edom and the king of Israel, Jehoram, that God is going to deliver the Moabites into your hands. So they go with the blessing of God, long and short. When they defeat the Moabites, eventually the king of Moab, when he saw that the battle was too much for him, then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offerings upon the wall. And there was a great indignation against Israel and they departed from him and returned to their land. This is what is believed could have happened. There's a group of people with faith in God and they are attacking this Moabite king destroying him by the hand and power of God and a man with deeper faith in his God appears and gets his first own and slays him before them and something in the spirit realm happened and that war ended because a man with a bigger sacrifice had appeared I'm trying to tell you how made up some people are when they believe their gods more than we are when we believe our God. So let me open your eyes to something. If I can take you back to the story of uh, Genesis 31, but the scriptures tell us that Rachel, as they were running away from Laban, she stole her father's gods. Those gods are called teraphim. Back in the day, people used to worship different gods and they believed that for you to preserve a household, to the next generation with power with wealth you needed to sacrifice your first son after killing him and sacrificing them to your god small god then eventually they'll get the bones of that son and put them in a corner and that became a god that's what they call therapy you look at your child in the eyes you played with them you went to school with them they made you laugh on dinner tables they did this and made fun and then a man puts a, a sword in that child bah, to redeem the destiny of his house that's how much they have given you find such a guy and you think that you're going to be on level field because you know how to sing heal song song many things are spiritual more than you think and because they're televised you think they are canon some people have sacrificed way more in the fallen world and we are sacrificing the kingdom of God. 
Am I saying go cut a goat and sacrifice it? No. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. But he has required one thing of you that he quits the sacrifice of the man in the world that you believe on him whom he has sent. What the man sacrificed in the Old Testament is your sacrifice of faith in the New Testament. Everything you say you believe, believe it. But the principle of sacrifice is now your work of faith. I'm trying to tell you, some of you, the reason why you are dealing with things that you pray they can't leave, they can't change, you're playing. Whether it's going to take a certain life of prayer to express your faith and act like you believe. Whether it's going to take a certain kind of crazy giving. Whether it's going to take a crazy kind of service, crazy kind of fast, a crazy kind of yielding. Whatever there is, the Lord has impressed on your heart. At one particular point, you must act out your faith. That's the sacrifice. Some of you pray like Jesus didn't die. Some of you fast like Jesus didn't die for you. Some of you give like Jesus didn't die for you. You don't look like you actually believe that you're living a resurrected life. Again, I repeat, faith without action is faith. Some of you, you just need to get a little bit crazy and you'll come out of that trouble. But you're too composed. You're too diplomatic. You're too furnished to worship God. Even when you're praying, you shake somebody and tell him, take God serious. Take God serious. You are in the presence of God, seeking him, fasting and praying. And then some random dude who has no destiny comes and takes As if Jesus did die for you. Somebody provokes you into compromise as if Jesus didn't die for you. Some of you must understand that the gospel is serious. Let God be God. If you chose to believe, believe to the end. If you are serious about living this resurrection life with Christ, start to act like it. Pray like a believer. Give like a believer. Serve like a believer. Do everything as crazy as you could because you are a believer. If it is indeed faith, God wants it extreme. You fight, you believe, you refuse, you stand. You... I know it hasn't worked, but I'm not going to change. I know things are not yet moving, but I'm not going to budge. I know I'm still feeling pain, but I'm going to go to church. Even tomorrow, I'm going to go to church. If, if he should take you out, let him take you out fighting. But this is what I learned. If what you have is faith, he can't take you out. Faith makes things leave. I say faith makes things leave.